Hey everyone, hope you and your loved ones are all safe from the COVID-19 epidemic situation in the world. So in this video I thought I'd talk about how to play Jakiro. Jakiro is typically played as a position 5 or hard support hero. However there have been many instances where Jakiro has been played as a core hero too. In this game I play Jakiro as a support and I will talk you through certain skill choices, itemization choices and talent tree selections I made in order to adapt to the game that was going on. I start off by buying two sets of tangos of which I give two to my mid player. I also invest in a windlass and the remaining gold on buying mangoes. I make the decision to buy the windlace because I assumed I would be facing off a Tusk plus a Venge or Ancient Apparition. And also Jakiro by default has a very slow movement speed and turn rate. As the first spell, I level up Dual Breath. Now Dual Breath is a really good spell to start off because it does 100 damage over 5 seconds and it slows the target for 28% and it also slows the attack speed by 28 at level 1. Jakiro has almost 60 attack damage and coupled with the slow provided by the dual breath we are able to contest the boundary rune very easily. Ok, so we start laning and as you may notice Jakiro is pretty good at harassing the enemy. However you gotta be careful as to how you use your dual breath because the spell hits in a long expanding cone shape in front of Jakiro and it affects enemy creeps as well. Therefore, unless you want the lane to push, you need to make sure that you try and avoid the lane creeps as much as you can when you are using dual breath. Having said that, your bread and butter harassment tool is Jakiro's third spell, Liquid Fire. At level 4, this is on just a 4 second cooldown and does a total of 120 magic damage over 5 seconds. Not only that, it slows the attack speed of your targets by 60 at level 4. And guess what, it doesn't cost a single drop of mana. So yes, use this to harass the living hell out of the enemy. But remember, you need to get a little close to hit this and there's a bit of an animation to the spell. Therefore, you need good positioning to get this right without drawing creep aggro. Also be mindful that the spell does damage in a 300 AoE. So guys, similar to Dual Breath, you need to make sure that you don't hit too many creeps with the spell unless you are looking to push the lane. At level 3, I put a point in my ice path as I thought a stun would be good for us in the lane. Here at minute 10 you can see me stacking two camps at once. I use my auto attack on one camp and use Dual Breath on the other so that both camps can be stacked. Dota is all about efficiency. At minute 16, I buy an urn of shadows because well, I feel that we will be fighting a lot as that seemed like how the game would progress. And as you can see, it actually pays off. This is not a standard item on Jakiro, however, note that I also have raindrops and a magic stick because of the constant skirmishes that we were having which were giving me free charges. This fight is a good example of how my urn purchase actually pays off. I get 4 urn charges by the end of the fight and I am able to help my team stay healed up decently. Item builds for Jakiro typically include Yule's Scepter and maybe a 4 staff or Glimmer Cape. The Yule's is amazing on Jakiro as it allows you to combo it with your Ice Path into Macrofire and Dual Breath. However, in this match, I wasn't initiating. I had a legion commander who would jump for the duel, a tree and protector with an AoE stun, an invoker who can tornado people and allow me to set up for an easy ice path or even a long duration stun by the DK. In this match, my job as a Jakiro was to sit at the back and use my spells to damage the enemy within the duration of our team's chain disables. Therefore, in order to maximize the damage I do, I bought a Vela Discord. It also gives me some much needed attributes and allows me to push lanes with relative ease. Now that I know the PL is targeting the back lines, I decided to go for a Glimmer Cape. This allows me to dart in and out of vision and also help my teammates. My next item choice is the Force Staff of course. This allows me to position myself better in teamfights 
and hide the PL so that I can draw his attention away from my course or help a co out of a sticky situation. Let's not forget that delightful Lagadim Scepter. I noticed that our fights are centered around killing this PL. Therefore, the longer my Macropire stays on, the more damage he will take while my two tanks try to take him down. This is why I opted for the Ganim Scepter at this point. You can also see that now I have a Ghost Scepter. This allows me to dodge all the physical damage that the enemy team might throw at. More specifically, if the PL decides to go on me, I can simply Ghost Scepter myself and kite him. Finally, I decide that I need to amp up my magic damage even more and I go for a Kaya which also decreases the amount of mana drain through the Diffuser Blade. Alright guys, let's take a look at my talent tree. I've gone for the plus 8% magic amp because that synergizes a lot with all my spells, especially the Macropire. I go for the plus 350 talent at level 15 simply because I feel the need to be alive in the team fights as much as possible as most of my spells have short cooldowns and the more spells I am able to cast down in a team fight the more chances I provide my team to win that particular team fight. I opt for the liquid fire minus 60 attack speed talent at level 20 as it will reduce the attack speed of all those PL illusions when they are bunched up together. And finally, the last talent I select at level 25 is the plus 1.5 second stun duration on the ice path. Some would argue that this was a bad choice, but I went for this particular talent as I already had a seer stone which allowed me to lay down long range stuns and spells. And with this talent, the long range ice paths become a 4 second duration stun which will definitely kite the PL and anyone else who would want to go down against my allies. This last fight near the Roshan pit shows how well my decision for selecting the stun duration talent pays off as PL gets immobilized for a full 4 second duration and then the DK chain stuns him so that we were able to bring him down very easily. That's pretty much it guys, we go on to win the match even against a PL and a sniper having rapiers and holding high ground. I hope you understand the concepts behind my item selection, skill selection and talent tree choices in this match as Jakiro. I also hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did enjoy it, please do not forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more awesome content. Until we meet again, it's GG, well played.